Om Jnana Timiran Tasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vinamah Satatam Kirtayanto Maam Yatantas Chadrida Vrataha Namashyantas Chamaam Bhaktya Nitya Yukta Mahasate Read the translation again. This is a description of a Mahatma. In the previous verse, the word Mahatma has been used. Oh, there's no... Uh, it's not working? And in this verse, the symptoms of a Mahatma are given. <coughs> Mahatma means a great soul. So one who is trying to make himself great is not a Mahatma. One who recognizes that Krishna is great is a Mahatma. And recognition of Krishna's greatness is expressed by glorifying him. Glorification of Krishna is called Kirtan. So one who is always engaged in glorifying Krishna is called a Mahatma. So Krishna has innumerable facets of his greatness, which are often uh, classified in four categories, namely his Nam, Rup, Guna and Lila. And accordingly, Kirtan is also Nam Kirtan, Gun Kirtan, Rup Kirtan and Lila Kirtan, of which the most famous is Nam Kirtan. Generally, if we use the word Kirtan without any qualifying adjective, then we understand that to mean Nam Kirtan. Nam Kirtan is especially recommended. It's, it's the natural function of liberated souls, but it's especially recommended for conditioned souls also. And especially in this Kali Yoga. Harayan Nama, Harayan Nama, Harayan Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nastoga, 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 Gatiran Yata. And give the translation of this. So this little girl, you're also chanting Nam Japam. Yeah, I was just going to say, please keep the beads off the floor. So, by chanting Nam Kirtan, one gradually comes to appreciate the qualities of Krishna. Sorry, Nam Rubgun Lila, the, the form of Krishna, the qualities of Krishna, and the pastimes of Krishna. So, uh, who will chant? One who has at least primary appreciation of their own position as the servant of Krishna. This is called Sambandhakya. And engagement in devotional service is called Abhidhaya. And by performing devotional service, one achieves Payojan or the ultimate goal of life, entering into Krishna Lila. So by chanting Nam Kirtan, one gradually comes to realize the Rup and the Gun and the Lila of Bhagavan and can enter into that Lila as a servant of the Lord. First one receives knowledge, Sambandha Gyan, I am the servant of Krishna. Then he acts on this platform in the primary stage by chanting the names of Krishna. And thus gradually one gets the opportunity to enter the Lila of the Lord where he continues as a servant of Krishna. So first of all one has knowledge, I am the servant of Krishna. Then chanting. Chanting means, please engage me in your service. And then one gets the opportunity to enter the Lord to again to do more service. So, Hara Nala Eva Kevalam. The holy name is the only way in this Kali Yuga. So you may think, well, all right, I'll chant Hari Nam. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, we, at least for those who are to take Diksha, they must chant at least 16 rounds of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra every day. So when we first come, we might think, well, that's a lot. I remember when I first came, in those days there was no uh, gradual preaching. It was, here's the beads, chant 16 rounds, just immediately. So I thought, well, that's a lot. How can I do that? And I saw that, well, all these other people here are doing it, and I suppose if they can do it, I can do it too. But actually, 16 rounds is not the ultimate. Lord Krishna says here, Satatam Kirti Antanam, always to be engaged in chanting. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said the same thing, Kirtaniya Sada Harihi. 
So, how is that possible? This Lord Krishna says here, Yatantas Chadudapataha, that devotional service should be undertaken with a firm vow. You shouldn't think that 16 rounds is enough. That I, I have to do this much and then it's all over. But the Jadavrata, the Jadavrataha means those who are engaged in devotional service with firm determination. Srila Prabhupada gives some examples of this Jadavrata in the purple. Fasting on Akadashi and on the appearance day of the Lord. Now, uh, it's very important, Srila Prabhupada talks about here, the rules and regulations are offered by the great Acharyas for those who are actually interested in getting admission into the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the transcendental world. Now, so here, Srila <coughs> Prabhupada is discussing getting admitted into the spiritual world to have the associ direct association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, let us see, if we ask you, who is interested in getting admission into the spiritual world to have the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Me too. What about you? <laughs> she doesn't know. She's too young. All right, now, Everyone has said they're interested in getting admission. But there's one word here Prabhupada uses, actually interested. Genuinely interested. So what is the symptom of one who is genuinely interested in getting admission? It's just like one, you may say that to someone, well, would you like to, are you interested to become a that a young person, we can ask them, are you interested to become a doctor? You say, yes. Yeah, and then you have to study so hard for many years. So anyone may say, yes, I'm interested, but who is ready to undertake the difficulty to do so? Of course, we see that in general, in India, the students are very determined in their studies. We see the young children, they get up and some of them five o'clock in the morning and they're studying and then again at night they're studying so they can get admission into medical college. But if we ask people to, what you have to do to get admission into the spiritual world, you have to rise early, chant Hare Krishna, they'll say, let me sleep. So here Prabhupada writes that those who are actually interested in getting admission into the spiritual world they are Mahatmas, they strictly observe all these rules and regulations and therefore they are sure to achieve the desired result. We may say, well, I chant 16 rounds, that's good enough. Why should I follow anything else? But obviously, <coughs> what's that sound? Obviously there's a different result from following very seriously and not following very seriously. One yeah. thing, you shouldn't just stretch in front of Prabhupada like this. Just tell him. He should tell him he should learn this. He should go around. I'm seeing in modern India no one knows even ordinary rules of Vaishnav Acha. They may be pious people, but there's no education. People don't know. They put Bhagavad Gita on the floor and all kinds of things. So this education is required. But who will take that? We have to be driravata, we have to be determined to learn. If we think, let me do a little bhakti and then I'll, let me see what's on TV and let me sleep all morning every day, then obviously we're not going to get the same result as one who follows seriously. Only when we're fully convinced that my self-interest is only to serve Krishna, then we'll take it very seriously. Now we were just reading this morning in Srila Prabhupada's purport that Prabhupada said that these centers of our ISKCON, they are set up principally to give Grihastas the opportunity to come and hear about Krishna consciousness. So you may think, well, the, the ashram is set up principally for the brahmacharis so they can live and do their bhajan. So that's true also. Yeah, do you get that? 
that, that the, 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 let's say that the ashrams are set up for the brahmacharis and sannyasi to their bhajan, that's true also. But then why have it in the city? You can have it in the country, nice peaceful ashram. It's in the city so that the grihastas can come and hear about Krishna consciousness and take advantage of all the programs being offered. Just like we start here at five o'clock in the morning with Mangalati. Actually in most of our centers the Mangalati is at 4.15 or 4.30. But it's being put a little later here just to give the Grihastas a better opportunity to come and take part. And uh, it's very nice that quite a few Grihasta devotees are regularly coming what is that verse? Shri Guru Vashtakam Etad Uchaya Brahma Mahurte Patiti Payatnat Sa Vindavana Vindavana Natha Sakshat Seva Labhai Bhai. That one who in the Brahma Mahurta chants loudly this Guru Vashtaka, they will, upon leaving this body, directly attain service to Vrindavan Natha, Krishna in Vrindavan. So I may say, well, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, that's good enough. But a devotee's attitude is never that I'm doing enough. He always wants to do more, he wants to serve Krishna more and more. So even a few years ago, that was the normal culture in India, that everyone will rise early in the morning and engage in some spiritual activities before going about their day-to-day work. But gradually, the, uh, even though this culture is going on for thousands of years, gradually over the last 20 to 30 years this has been lost. And gradually the people of India have adopted the culture of the Rakshasas. The word, the common word in Ramayana used for Rakshasa is Nishata. It means they move around at night. So we see in modern India people like to move, ar- move around at night and then they sleep all morning when they should be doing bhakti. And generally at night people do all the most degraded activities. So this, uh, these centers are being set up especially to give all people the opportunity to engage in he- hearing and chanting about Krishna. And we may think, well, that's, that's very difficult, that's a lot of suffering. Why don't we just sleep as long as we can and then whenever we like, sometime we'll chant Hare Krishna. But as Prabhupada states here, first of all he talks about fasting on different days and then following rules and regulations. But then Prabhupada says, this is actually uh, performed in a happy mood. First of all, Prabhupada talks about following the rules and regulations. And then he says that this devotional service is easy and performed in a happy mood. So you may say, what's easy about following these rules and rising early? It doesn't sound very easy to me. But then if we consider... What the goal is, going back to Godhead, actually it's very easy. That uh, we read in the Shastra of Rishis performing severe austerities for thousands of years, but no one's asking anyone to do that. If someone comes and asks, well, what do we have to do for bhakti? We don't say, well, we'll hang you upside down in a tree for two weeks. The, the, in Mahabharata, it's described the Valakilyas, the 60,000 sages, they're each the size of a thumb, and they were performing tapasya by hanging upside down in a tree for thousands of years. Or it's described in that uh, for the Vanaprastas, they would, in the winter, they would sit in the cold water all day and do meditation. And that's in the Himalayas, not in Bella. And in the summer, they have to sit with fire surrounding them and in the hot sun, fire coming down also, and meditate. Now, don't run away, we're not asking you to do that. But we do ask those who are actually serious, as Prabhupada says here, to, um, to, to take a little difficulty so that one can become spiritually advanced. But actually it's not difficulty, it's not suffering, it's joyful. As those who uh, are going, those who start to take it up, they feel, actually this is very nice. And so so much so that if they 
for some reason they they miss it. They think, oh, that's very bad. Because actually Krishna consciousness is full of transcendental bliss. And the more we take it up, the more we become transcendentally blissful. So it's not that we're going to people and saying, you have to get up in the morning, you have to follow all the rules, not like that. But we're saying that if you take to it, then naturally you'll want to take to it more and more. It's a natural process. Of course, we have our lower nature also. It's not that we all immediately become self-realized overnight. So, therefore, we accept the process of uh, vaidhi sadhana bhakti. We accept the rules and regulations because we know that these are for our own good. And that sometimes due to maya, if I'm feeling, oh, I don't feel like following today, but still we follow because we know it is for our own good. So, mostly in these classes on Sundays, we are trying to uh, inspire people to take up the process of Krishna consciousness. And during our... because this is a program for more general public. But, but during the week we'll be discussing so many other topics related with Bhagavan and Bhakti. There are so many topics discussing about the different forms of the Lord, different processes of bhakti, different attitudes within bhakti. But today I'm speaking a little bit about the determination that is required to make more advancement in bhakti. Because most of you are coming regularly and many of you are taking up Krishna consciousness more and more seriously. So we want to encourage you to take it up more and more seriously. Now, as I was saying, this, these centers are set up particularly for the benefit of Krihastas. And, of course, Krihastas, they have Grihakarya, Grihakartavya. But we also have our duty to Krishna. So, Grihastas, they have duties. Students, they have duties. Different people have different worldly duties. But we have to uh, see how to make advancement in Krishna consciousness. Mm. This should be understood to be the center of life. Those who are Grihastas, they, they have that duty and we don't say not to follow that duty. But uh, Grihastha devotees, they can take inspiration from the uh, Acharyas who are in household alone. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was an ideal Grihastha and Acharya who he finished all his work, he was a magistrate, he would finish up the court cases quickly and he would come home, he would take rest from 8 to 12 in the evening and then he would rise at 12 at night and write books and in this way he wrote so many wonderful books of Krishna consciousness and he was preaching Krishna consciousness and uh, he took early retirement so that he could engage full time in the activities of Krishna consciousness. And uh, generally after retirement people just kind of fade away, but he became uh, more and more active in Krishna consciousness. Our own Srila Prabhupada, of course, before accepting sannyas, he was a Grihastha devotee and uh, he was assisting his sannyas, he was assisting his sannyasi godbrothers in preaching Krishna consciousness. And uh, he was writing and he was uh, very much involved in the activities of Krishna consciousness within Grihastha Land. So, to become qualified to enter the spiritual world, we have to become fully Krishna conscious. And that is possible if we are very much determined to be Krishna conscious. We require to learn what Krishna consciousness is. For that we shall have, Prabhupada has given us so many books. We shall, have, we shall have to read so many books. And we shall have to hear regularly from devotees. Srinvata Shadhaya Nityam Grinatas Chasvacheshitam This is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. That we should go on regularly hearing with great faith and accept that within our hearts. 
and as is stated here, endeavor very seriously in Krishna consciousness. And the result will be Kalena Nati Dhirghena Bhagavan Vishatevidi. Within not a very long time, soon, Bhagavan Krishna will manifest within our hearts. So, obviously, following with great determination, that will please Krishna and that will help us to make quick advancement in Krishna consciousness. We can't say that following seriously and not following seriously is all the same. If the, just like the doctor gives some medicine and says you follow all these rules, obviously if we take the medicine that will help, but if we don't follow the rules it may not help so much. So we should take the medicine. The medicine is chanting Hare Krishna. But the rules and regulations are there also. If the doctor tells us you have to do, you have to do exercise every day, and stop smoking, and don't eat oil, and so many things, then we have to follow. If you say, well, I'm just taking the medicine, and it's a very good doctor, so therefore I'll get the result. Well, uh, you won't get the same result if you, as following the instructions. If, you may think, I'll cheat the doctor by not following. But we're cheating ourselves. So, the Acharyas have given us so many rules and regulations to help us become advanced in Krishna consciousness. These rules and regulations are to help us focus our minds on Krishna. There are many things which if we follow will help us to become Krishna conscious. For instance, if we associate with devotees, that will help us to become Krishna conscious because devotees remind us of Krishna. If we attend the Arati and chant in Kirtan, that will help us to become Krishna conscious. That's why the Acharyas have given this process. But then uh, there are things to be avoided also. If we uh, If we are, for instance, eating food which is cooked by non-devotees, that will affect our consciousness in an unfavorable way. Because the consciousness of those persons who prepared it is not Krishna consciousness. If we sleep very late in the morning, instead of rising early to chant Hare Krishna, that shows Krishna that we are not very serious to please him. So we can't say that following strictly and not following strictly is all the same. At least that's not what Srila Prabhupada says here. Prabhupada says that the Mahatmas, the great souls, they strictly observe all these rules and regulations and therefore they are sure to achieve the desired result. So there is a difference between following strictly and not following strictly. Now I've heard that sometimes people say about me that I'm very strict. But I just say the same thing which my guru told me, that uh, that's what a disciple is supposed to do. He said that guru is supposed to teach what his guru taught him. So if I was to teach anything else, then I would be cheating. Srila Prabhupada very kindly taught us to follow these rules. Why did he do that? Because these rules are given in Shastra and given by the Acharyas. And the result of following these rules is that we become more and more Krishna conscious. And the result of not following these rules is that we don't become Krishna conscious. We, we, remain, in, we remain in Maya. So, Hare Nama Eva Kevalam, the holy name is the only way, but we have to know how to chant the holy names and what to follow so that we can actually become, get the effect of chanting the holy names. Everything's clear and straightforward. There's a saying in, the Beng in Bengali about cheating the blacksmith by giving poor quality steel. That if you want to make a good knife for use in the kitchen, then the system was you give some steel to the blacksmith and he will prepare it. So if someone thinks I'll give the worst quality steel, then I'll give it to the blacksmith, I'll use it, it will break and then I'll blame him. You see, I, you made this knife, but it's made uselessly. It broke the first time I used it. Now you have to make another one for me. 
But the blacksmith will say, well, it's I only am giving you the steel that you gave me. It's not my fault, it's your fault. So if we give ourselves fully to Guru and Krishna, then they will mold us in such a way that we can become first class. But if we want, if, if we want to cheat ourselves, then we can uh, not be Dhridabhata, we can be just so-so. But we are executing Krishna Bhakti, as Prabhupada writes here, the, to get admission into the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the transcendental world. So in the transcendental world, there's only service to Krishna. And actually Krishna gets up early in the morning. So if Krishna is getting up early, he's going out with the cows, Come, let's go with Krishna. Oh, 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 I think I'll sleep a bit more. I'll go, I'll go and join him later. Then we're not qualified to enter the spiritual world. There's the well-known story of Bilva Mangal Thakur. He was a great devotee of Krishna. He composed the Krishna Kanamrita, beautiful text describing Krishna. But in before taking to Krishna consciousness, he was very much attached to a prostitute. He used to cross the river every night to go to visit her. Her name was Chintamani. So, one day, Bilva Mangal's father died and he had to attend to the getting him burned and all this kind of thing. But he was telling, hurry up, finish, finish, I, I have to go, I have important thing to do. The important thing was he wanted to go see his girlfriend. So it was in the monsoon and he came to the river and it was completely flooding and a great flow and there was no boat available and anyone would have thought, no, there's no use to it. But he saw some, in the half light of the night, he saw a log floating. So he grabbed the log and he kind of Holding on to that, he swam across the river. And then he got up out of the river and he saw actually the log was a dead body floating in the river. <laughs> so he came to Chintamani's house and there was a compound with a gate, very high gate. He was calling out, but she couldn't hear him because of the storm. So he saw hanging over the wall, there's a one branch is hanging over the wall. From branch of the tree. So he caught hold of that branch and he climbed up and got on onto the tree. But then he saw the branch he climbed up, it was actually a big snake hanging from the tree. And he jumped down out of the tree and almost killed himself. And he was banging on the door. Chintamani, Chintamani. She opened the door, she was astonished to see him. She said, How did you come on such a night like this? It was so late, I thought you weren't coming. He said, yeah, I became late, I became delayed, there was some important business I had to do. But she said, you never attended to every, any important business ever before, you always just came to see me. He said, well, actually my father died, so I had to break the head and light the fire, but I came as soon as I could. Oh, your father died just now, and still you're coming to see me. And how did you cross the river? He said, well, there was, uh, fortunately there was a dead body floating there. <laughs> And how did you get over the wall? Yeah. Well, there was a snake hanging down, so I got into the tree and came, and I fell down and almost broke my bones. No, no, she no. Said, oh, you're so determined to enjoy my body, which is just a bag of pus and blood and bones. So if, she said, if you had as much determination to serve Krishna, you would be a great devotee. Because Chintamani, despite being a prostitute, she also had some attraction to Krishna. So actually, Bilba Mangal Thakur, in his previous life, he'd also been a devotee. But somehow, he became so sinful. But when he heard these words, it hit him like a thunderbolt. Oh, Krishna, I was supposed to be worshipping Krishna. So he immediately left Chintan. And he thought, now I'm going to go to Vrindavan and worship Krishna. So he was walking and walking. And he's thinking, I'm just going to Vrindavan and I'll worship Krishna. As he went to one village, he saw all the women at the well collecting water. And there was one uh, who was very beautiful, and uh, he forgot his determination to serve Krishna. And that old propensity for degraded behavior again arose in his mind. 
So he followed that woman and she brought the water back to her house. Then the woman saw she's following, so she came home, she said to her husband, this sadhu is following me. So the man said, oh, you're very lucky, a sadhu has come to our house. And he said to the sadhu, what do you want? How can we serve you? And uh, Bilba Mangal openly said, I want to enjoy your work. <coughs> so the man said, well, you're a sadhu, you're our guest, you've come to our home, so we are obliged to serve you. So he went in the private room with the woman, and again he thought, what am I doing? I gave up everything to go to Vrindavan, and now again I'm going down to the hellish consciousness. So he uh, addressed that woman as mother. He said, mother, you give me the pin from your hair. He took that pin and put it in his eyes and said, these eyes, because of these eyes, I'm going down, I'm losing my proper understanding, therefore better have no eyes. So now blind, he somehow made his way to Vrindavan. And uh, he lived there for 700 years. And Krishna would come every day and play with him and tease him. And just playing with him, he would come close and Bilba Mangal would try to catch and then he, Krishna would run away. And Bilba Mangal would say that, I can't, you run away from me, I can't catch you with my hand, but actually you can't run away from me because I caught you in my heart. So he was a great devotee. Just see his determination. That determination, first of all, to enjoy sense pleasure. So if we think that if we had as much determination as Bilva Mangal had to enjoy blood, bone, skin, pus, as we had that much determination to serve Krishna, we could become great devotees. So I, I just, for some time I was staying at... Uh, Srila Prabhupada was donated some land outside Hyderabad. So for some time I was staying there. We have a temple there, some farm community is supposed to be. So I was staying there during the monsoon one time. So from the cottages to the temple was some distance. And sometimes we'd have to go to Mongolarti in the heavy rain and there's no proper road and there's all muds and puddles. So that time I would remember Bilba Mango that he's going through so much difficulty in the rain to go to see Chintaman. So, uh, that's a good inspiration for us, that how we can become attached to going to see Krishna. Yeah, don't go to see Krishna. Rupa Goswami has told us, don't go to see Krishna. He has written in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. He has said that Krishna is standing on the bank of the Yamuna at Keshi Ghat. He's standing in threefold bending form playing his flute. He is exquisitely beautiful. So if you want to enjoy material life, if you want to remain attached to your bodily relationships, family, society, friendship, love, don't go to see Krishna. Because if you see Krishna, then you become fully absorbed in love with him. So in a back-to-front way, Rupa Goswami is telling us, go to see Krishna. Go to see Krishna. But if we don't want, if we want to remain attached to material life, then don't go to see Krishna. So the Acharyas, headed by Rupa Goswami, has given the process by which we can go to see Krishna. Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Samrit Sindhu has given us all the rules and regulations which we can follow so that we can go to see Krishna. And actually, the, the secret to seeing Krishna is to not try to see Krishna, but to think how to serve Krishna. Because if we serve Krishna so nicely, then he will come to see us. Because he's very kind to his devotees. But Krishna is also very intelligent. We can cheat the blacksmith, maybe. Even the blacksmith, not so easy to cheat. But we can't cheat Krishna. So we, we have to be very sincere in Krishna consciousness to follow the process very nicely. And Krishna will help us. Tesham <coughs> Satatam. Again this word, Satatam, this comes up later in Bhagavad Gita. And the word Yukta also comes up. 
तेषाम सतत युक्तानं भजतं प्रीति पूर्वकं ददामि बुद्धि योगं तं येन माम उपयान्ति ते यू कैन गिव द ट्रांसलेशन So what do we want? We already asked before, who wants to go to the spiritual world with Krishna? Now there are more people came, so who no, wants no, to go? No. You don't want to go? You're already there. I'm a selfish man. All right. So therefore we have to follow the rules and regulations that will help prepare our consciousness so we have the seva bhav the mood of service instead of the bhoga buddhi the mood that i should enjoy this material hari krishna any question about this Want to say that? Any prediction about Krishna will take at a time in Kali Yuga? Well, he already has done. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Barnam Tusha Krishna Sango Pangasya Parshadam Yam Jai Sankirtana Payarya Janti Hi Sumedhisa. Srimad Bhagavatam states that in Kali Yuga, the Lord will come. always chanting the name of krishna yes. his form will not be black he will be uh, accompanied by all his great devotees and those who are actually intelligent they shall worship him by the process of sankirtan yagya how to overcome the obstacles that comes in the way of spirituality what do you mean by spirituality Translate the question. Trying, trying to understand the name, the, uh, the obstacles that come to the. In the path What do you mean by spiritual? What is the path of the Lord? Lord means who? First, you have to learn what is. You have to take basic education. Most hey. people say spiritual life, God, bhakti. They don't know what these words mean. First, you have to take a proper education. From your question, you're, it sounds like you're assuming that you already know what spiritual life is. But without even taking a basic education, how can you understand what is spiritual life? It's just like someone walks up to a doctor and says that, "Well, what are what are the common obstacles in performing heart surgery?" And, uh, what the doctor will reply? The person doesn't know what is heart. Why is he even asking about heart surgery? First, you have to know what spiritual life is. Then you you can't even understand what the obstacle is until you know what spiritual life is. The first obstacle is your own ignorance. The obstacle is that you think you know when you don't know. That's worse than not than just not knowing. So you come regularly and hear, read these books of Sri La Prapa. Then you can understand what Krishna consciousness is. He said, "I'm speaking about devotion, bhakti, but what about surrender, sharanagati? Yes, sharanagati is a prerequisite." At the end of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna states, "Mama, come, Shyam Raja." Then he promises, "Aham tvang sarva pape bhyo moksha yishami ma." Shri Jai will take away the sinful reactions, but actual praying starts on a platform higher than this. If we're thinking, "I shall, ta- I shall take shelter of Bhagavan so that he will deliver me from my sinful reactions," there's still some consideration what he will do for me. So, prem bhakti means to act in a manner for the pleasure of the Lord, even if my what might I might consider my own self-interest is not fulfilled. 
this uh, we have in the Lila of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he went in the Mangalarti for Darshan of Jagannath in Puri. Yeah. Then he started Kirtan and that continued up to midday. That means went on from eight hours. Yeah. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was just absorbed in ecstasy of Kirtan. And all the other devotees were completely exhausted. So gradually his secretary, Suruk Damada, seeing the situation, he told the devotees one by one to stop chanting. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going on chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And all he's realizing no one else is chanting. And he said, what, what happened? And Sur Damada told him, it's already midday and no one, you have to go take your bath, and do your madhyanam, all these things. So Chaitanya was said, oh, all right, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't realize, so late. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as usual, took his bath in the sea at midday and then he took prasad. And after taking prasad, he would come back to his residence and his servant Govinda would come and massage his feet a little bit and then Mahaprabhu would take rest and Govinda would go to take Mahaprabhu's prasad remnants. But this, on this day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just entered the room and he collapsed right there, just inside the door. So Govinda came and said, could you just move a little bit so I can come inside to massage you? So Mahabharu said, no, I can't move at all. Impossible. So then Govinda said, well, how can I come in to massage you? Chaitanya Mahabharu said, well, you do whatever you like, but I can't move. So then Govinda took off his uttariya, his top cloth, and spread it over the body of Mahaprabhu, offered obeisances and stepped. And then he massaged him. And Mahaprabhu fell asleep. And after some time, uh, he woke up and he saw Govinda is still there. He said, well, why, why didn't you go and take your meal? He said, well, how could I cross over your body to go out? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, well, how did you come in? And Govinda didn't reply. But in his mind, he thought that uh, to, to do service, even if I have to commit millions of offenses and go to hell, I can do so by doing service, but for my own sense gratification, I don't want, I can't even imagine performing even the slightest offense. So, uh, this attitude that is that of a topmost devotee. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is speaking to Arjuna and Arjuna is speaking as if he is a conditioned soul. So Krishna is just trying to induce us to take shelter of him for our own benefit. But beyond that platform of thinking, yes, it will be for my benefit to take shelter of the Lord, is the platform of pure love, where one is prepared to go to hell for the service of the Lord. Of course, the devotee never goes to hell. Yamaraj won't allow, because if the devotee goes to hell, then hell will become empty. Just by his going there, all the Naragvasis will get delivered. <laughs> then Yamaraj won't have any more service to So anyway, this um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, he taught love beyond surrender. We're talking today about the rules and regulations. That is the first symptom of a, that is the first stage of Sharanagati. That one uh, takes, he follows the rules and regulations having faith that these will uh, help me to develop in bhakti. But when one is fully Krishna conscious, he doesn't think this rule, that rule, automatically he follows. He doesn't think I have to follow this rule because it's a rule. But he does so because he likes to follow. Or even if a topmost devotee doesn't follow the, the rules so strictly, it's because he may be serving the Lord in another way. Just like our own Srila Prabhupada insisted that his disciples attend Mongolati. But he didn't personally attend because at that time he was writing his books. So he was performing Kirtan in another way, in a manner which was ultimately even more important. Anything else? Yeah, here. So everyone please chant 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama,